Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Skipton Baptist Church Carols by Bring Your Own Candlelight. I'm Phil Burns. And I'm Lisa Holmes. And wherever you are watching this, and whether it's 7 p.m. on December the 20th or some other time, you are so welcome, and we really hope and pray that you will know the presence of our Saviour with you tonight. What a year it's been. Almost exactly nine months ago, our country went into lockdown, and little did we know that we would still be existing with this strange new normality of furloughs and face masks, of social distancing and separation, of lockdowns and limitations. They've been called unprecedented times. Well, maybe, or maybe not. This is not the first time our world has experienced hardship and challenge, disappointments and frustrations. It's not the first time that despair has seemed stronger than hope, darkness more overwhelming than the light. It was into such a world that the Son of God was born, and tonight he is our focus. And so although we could focus on all these aspects of the past year and our current situations, maybe what we really need to hear again is the plain and simple story of Jesus' birth, of God coming among even us. We encourage you to join with us wherever you are in singing out those familiar carols that we've chosen for this evening. We know it isn't the same as being together, belting out those well-loved festive songs. But maybe tonight, as you watch and as you listen, look afresh and think about the words, those majorly overly familiar words that maybe you'll notice within them there's some amazing, earth-shatteringly profound truths that just might bring you some hope, some joy, and some peace to your hearts. So let's begin.
childhood's pattern day by day like us he grew he was little weak and helpless tears and smiles like us he knew and he feels for all our sadness and he shares in all our gladness and our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love for that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above and he leads his children on to the place where he is Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honour Galilee of the nations by way of the sea, beyond Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, for he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So several hundred years later, the hopes and fears of these verses began to work themselves out with an unknown couple in an obscure town in some very unexpected ways. Dear Diary, today has been the strangest day. It started ordinarily enough. My parents were out and I was making bread for the evening meal. The sun was shining and the birds were singing outside. Then I had what I can only describe as a feeling of heavy silence. As if the whole world had stopped and was watching with bated breath. But despite the silence, there was a sense of a melody just at the edge of my hearing. I turned around and saw a glowing figure. I couldn't tell you what they looked like. It was like they were in the same room, but also as if they were somewhere else at the same time. I heard a beautiful musical voice. Greetings, Mary. You are highly valued by God. The Lord is with you. I had to sit down. My thoughts were spinning. Me, highly valued, but I'm just an ordinary girl. What could this mean, that an angel, as I somehow knew this was, would say this to me? The angel continued, don't be afraid, Mary. That was easier said than done. Angels are just a bit overwhelming. And that's aside from suddenly appearing in my kitchen. Then they told me that I was going to have a special baby and call him Jesus. Well, I know where babies come from. My mum and I have had all the chats a while before I got engaged to Joseph. So I plucked up courage and asked, how will this happen? 
I'm not married and never have been with a man. I think I expected them to say that I would marry Joseph and then, in the fullness of time, in some angelly way. Instead, I was told that the Holy Spirit of God would come over me and that this baby would be a son of God and saviour. God has chosen me, an ordinary girl, to be a mother for the Lord. I'm still struggling to take it in, but I trust him. At least I think I do. So I replied, I am the Lord's servant. Let it happen, just as you have said. So now I'm feeling excited at what God is going to do. It's something completely new. I'm scared. I mean, a baby is a big deal. Even in an ordinary situation, and I don't feel ready. Yet, I feel peace as I trust as I trust in God's control. But one thought keeps going round my head. How am I going to tell Joseph? Mary? Mary, are you there? Hold on a second, this whole... Th- there we go. I think so, I'm here. Ah, good. Um, the, the papers came, by the way. Uh, what papers? The ones for registering. You know, we've got to go to Bethlehem and tell them we exist. 
won't make any difference. They don't care. They do what they want anyway. Yeah, I know, but we don't really have a choice. I don't want to. I'm sick and tired of all this propaganda that they keep telling us about, about how wonderful everything is. I wish we could make a change, you know, a real change. Yeah, I know. Hey, maybe that baby you're carrying might do something. What was it your cousin said? That he's God's baby? Now, now that's a really good question. Would he want us to register for the Romans? Um, I'm not sure that's how it works, Mary. You're talking about a whole other level there. Oh, but it's just not fair. I don't want to go. I'm eight months pregnant. I shouldn't have to go. Yeah, you shouldn't have to go, but you do. Why? You know why. I've got to go and register and I'm taking you with me because I'm not leaving you here in this town with all the gossip that's going around. Things could get ugly. Why could it not be more straightforward? People blank me in the streets, you know. I know, but it could be worse for you. And that's why I'm taking you with me and not leaving you here. Why do they just don't get it? It's because we've seen angels, Mary. They haven't. Well, all right, but you can carry all the extras. Extras? What extras? The extra supplies, you know, like the locust volivants, the, the date and fish pasty, pasties, the garlic, the, the honey and goat sandwiches. You know how much I've taken a fancy to those over the last few months. And I just can't survive without them anymore. And, well, let's face it, you won't want to be buying them in Bethlehem with the prices there. True. I'll give you that one. I blame the Romans and their single currency. And taxing everything in sight. I mean, there'll be a tax on sawdust and fresh air next, you know. Well, I guess we'd better go and get ready. You know what, Joseph? I don't think there'll be anywhere to stay. The place will be heaving. Well, we can stay with my cousins. They'll put us up. And if they don't have room, we can stay with my uncle. Not if they've heard of the gossip from Nazareth about me being pregnant and all. They'll be ashamed. No, they won't. They're, they're caring people. I hope you're right. They could easily leave us outside in the cold. <laughs> when have you ever heard of a pregnant mother being left out in the cold? You watch. They'll all be falling over themselves to help you have that baby. We'll be okay, you know. Even if we've got to bunk with the animals. God will look after us. He hasn't given us his baby to then go and abandon us. I just, I just don't want to let him down. I wish it was so much easier. I'm scared, Joe. I know. Me too. Me too. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, town of David. 
because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Good, he's asleep. There's a lot to wonder about when you become a mother. New life with all its potential. An array of possibilities. A new life and a new love which overwhelms you and fills you with joy. And concern, a lot of concern. The world becomes full of what ifs. What if he doesn't sleep? What if he doesn't eat? What if he's ill? What if I can't cope? That's all wonderful, but also routine. I've seen mothers with children ever since I had eyes to see, and all these things are remarkable and commonplace. I feel all these things too, but there's more. I think it would be true to say that my boy comes with more what ifs than most. What if, he, what if he grows to become all that he's been promised? Or what if he's not able to bear the responsibility, the expectation, the joy and the pain? What if people don't understand? What if everybody demands of him? And what if they don't get what they want? What if? 
What if it all goes horribly wrong? And what if I'm there to watch and I can't do anything to help? And what if he's more... What if he is the one we've been expecting? What if he's the one that will save us from all our sins? What if all our hopes and all our fears come down to this? To him? It's good to see him sleeping. So peaceful. Perhaps this is enough for today. I look at him and I can't help but wonder, what if? We read in Luke chapter 2 about an eventful evening when some shepherds had a fairly life-changing encounter with a bunch of angels. So let's hear from them. This is amazing. I can't believe it's still shining. It's dimmer than last night. Oh, well, the night it all happened was a particularly cold night for Bethlehem. It was that. It was it that. Was, it was. But there we were, staring into the darkness, yeah. fighting sleep, mm. as we often did. Yeah. On the lookout for lions and bandits. Yeah. Our hands on our slingshots. You used the slingshot. I had a knife. Call that a knife? Well, still, if a lion sneaks up on you, I prefer a knife. What can I say? I'm old school. King David and all that. Anyway, yeah. we were ready in case a bandit came. Because they'd been a few times recently and, you know, taken some of our animals. And then all heaven broke loose. For a moment, I thought I'd fallen asleep. And I was being awoken by a really bright light. The sun was shining and, and I had to shield my eyes. A feeling of terror came over my body. I mean, end of day's terror. I thought it was all just over. Have you ever had a moment when your life flashes before you, right before your eyes, and a hundred things pass through your mind? The sound of your wife's voice, the name of your children, the lovely smell of cooking as you walk into the kitchen, the last time Chelsea won the Champions League. You thought that? When I saw the angel, I thought I was just going to die. The sky was like a wall of flame. The angel was so close, I could almost touch him. Was I floating? Was I still on this earth? I was about to scream for mercy when I heard what sounded like a thousand men shouting to me that it was a voice of a single angel and he said, Do not be... <clears throat> Do not be afraid. Believe me, it was much more terrifying. They get the idea. The voice echoed across the hills and beat through my heart like a drum. Words I'll never forget. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you the good news that brings great joy to all people. Today, your Saviour is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. But that wasn't it. The sky filled with more light, as though one by one, God was putting in place new stars, a hundred suns to fill the night. And then the sweetest music that Shep or I, any of you would ever hear, filled the sky like a thousand worshippers on instruments with the choir of a thousand voices that were saying, Glory to God! Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. The sound filled the skies, the hills and the valleys. How long were they there? I have no idea. For a moment? The other shepherds and the sheep were the only other people who witnessed this. 
But I'm telling you, we touched heaven. We saw and we heard eternity. And that is an even the most amazing part, no? Because, my friends, we saw him, the baby, the Christ child, the saviour of the world. I thought he would come as an emperor or a conquering king. But he's there in the city of Bethlehem, lying in a manger. The Messiah we've all been waiting for. Only God would do something so revolutionary, so impossible. We don't know how long this strange phenomenon of light will last. God shone like a pillar at night for our ancestors for a long time in the desert, at one, for quite a long time, didn't it? It did, yes. Maybe the glory of his messengers will last for a while, yeah. right here on this hill. And maybe this miraculous light will all fade away. But no matter what, we will tell the story. We don't know who will believe us. It's already dimmed over the last few days, but to whoever is out there, whoever will listen, we will share this story as if our words are light. And so we say to those who will hear us, glory to God in the highest. A saviour is born and he is Christ the Lord. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. 
When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, this is what the prophet has written. But you, but you Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a leader, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by his Star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light.
westward bleeding, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. So one of the things that's most impacted me this year has been all the imposed limitations and the multiple changes and nuances for each one. You can't leave your house. Well, you can leave your house, but only for essential shopping. Stay at home. But make sure you leave your home for one lot of exercise a day and don't drive too much. You can't go abroad. Well, you can go abroad, but when you come back, you have to stay in your house for two weeks. You can go out, but whenever you're in and not out, you have to wear a mask. You can't go to church. You can go to church, but not our church, because it's not drafty enough. You can't sing. You can sing if you're in a choir or if you're a professional, because then it's not risky. You can gather in a group of six. You can't gather in a group of six if you're in the wrong tier. Ah! Ah! Are you still with me? So many limitations. But the other day, something new about the Christmas story really struck me. Jesus chose to limit himself. It wasn't forced on him by the government or the law. He chose to be limited. Jesus left heaven and became limited as a human being. He became one of us. And that's the message of the Christmas story, the simple truth of the Christmas story, that Jesus chose to be with us. To be limited, not just to an adult human, but to be a baby, totally vulnerable, entirely dependent, to enter our world in the same way as we all do. 
And you know what? The world was a pretty chaotic place when Jesus was born. The Romans were in charge in Palestine. Roman soldiers were everywhere, often violent. Taxes were high. People struggled in poverty. And there was a lot of fear and anxiety about what the future would look like. That was the situation in Israel in the first century AD. People were hoping for freedom, hoping for security, hoping for a sense of identity and spiritually looking for a closeness and a purpose that could only be found in God. And Jesus came in the middle of all of that. And even from before he was born, the message he carried was that there is still hope wrapped up in a bundle of seven pounds and a few ounces. In this bundle was and is the hope of the world. The God of the universe chose to communicate with us in a way that we could understand. People found the raw presence of God totally overwhelming. So he met us in our context and within our human limitations. In this particular instance, the fact that God limited himself to the size and power of a small baby was actually a good thing, even a God thing. God came and dwelt with us. Now that's a really snazzy word, which means he lived with us, among us humans, experiencing all the stuff that we experience, growing up, being hungry and thirsty and tired, working out how to deal with parents and friends, facing the same kind of stresses and temptations as we do. He discovered what it was like to be a human being. He faced the same kind of fears and anxieties as we do. He chose to be limited, just like us. He also knew what it was like to hope to anticipate, to laugh, and to have fun. From the beginning of this pandemic, we have known hopes and fears. In so many ways, they're like two sides of the same coin. We hope, our anticipation grows, and we get excited, but then we fear, we feel afraid. Maybe it won't work out like we had hoped. Perhaps something will go wrong or spoil it. For so many of us this year, our hopes have genuinely turned to disappointment as parties and holidays have been cancelled or postponed. But then surprisingly, perhaps, others have found that what they expected to be a disappointment has turned out to be so much better than they had originally anticipated. Hopes and fears, both are to do with the unknown, and we don't like the unknown, do we? It's about the uncontrollable, it's about the future, something which we, we can't grasp and we can't mould to our liking. We hope for what we would like to happen, to be happy, to be secure, for our friends and loved ones to be okay, for everything to work out in, a, in the best way possible. But we also fear, we fear for what we dread, loss, difficulty, illness, suffering. The ancient carol reminds us that the hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. On the night of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem, Something changed. In that tiny baby was the possibility of overcoming fear and embracing hope forever. It's easy to remember that Jesus came to fulfill our hopes. But in saying that, that doesn't mean that he promises a nice rosy way ahead where all will be well. He also meets us and those in first century Israel in our fears too. And the truth is that sometimes our hopes do come to pass. Our dreams do come true. And ultimately, we believe that Jesus brings complete hope for us. Hope to have a relationship with God, our loving Father, now and into eternity. But sometimes our fears are realized too. And the truth of Christmas is that we have a God who is willing to get down in the dirt with us and to walk alongside us through fulfilled hopes shattered dreams, fears that actually don't come to pass, but also the valleys of sorrow and suffering. He is with us in all of these. Jesus was given a special name at his birth, which captures the essence of hopes and fears meeting in him that night. It's a name that's been mentioned more than once already tonight. Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And this year, perhaps more than ever in recent history, globally, we have all shared the same 
or similar fears and hopes. We have experienced a common experience. And the words from that line in the carol, the hopes and fears of all the years, remind us that throughout time, people have known similar hopes and fears. Across the world today, and across the years even, the truth is that God has been with us. He is with us in the here and now. And the amazing, wonderful news is that no matter what lies ahead of us, individually, as families, communities, and countries, he promises the offer that he will be with us. Emmanuel. Sit alone. We do not stand alone. We do not walk alone. We do not dance alone. Unseen, unveiled. Him God is with us there, Emmanuel, Emmanuel, our God is with us there, we do not work alone, we do not cook alone, we do not drive alone. Luke 15, 20, and the story of the prodigal son. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. We feel that perhaps God is challenging us to come back to him tonight. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you that we do not walk alone. 
We pray that each of us will tonight experience God's love and presence and that you will touch and bless us in our homes, whatever we are feeling and whatever our circumstances. We pray that even if we have turned our backs on you, you embrace us with your open, loving arms, just as the father welcomed his son in the story of the prodigal son. Emmanuel, God is with us here. Thank you. At Christmas time, we celebrate that you love us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, into the world to die for us and offer the best gift ever, the promise of eternal life, if we believe in him. After such a challenging year, we pray for peace in our hearts. We pray especially for those who have lost loved ones during this year, for those who are struggling, especially with anxiety and depression, for those who are lonely, for those who have financial concerns through the loss of jobs, and for those who are struggling to put food on the tables this Christmas. We pray that God's love will embrace each one. We pray that God will bless the work of CAP and the food banks across our nation this Christmas. And we pray that both those giving and receiving will be blessed. Thank you that we are never alone. Emmanuel, our God is with us. Father, we thank you for the hope that the COVID vaccines bring and for the amazing frontline workers especially those within the NHS who have worked tirelessly throughout the year. Pray that you will bring them rest and refreshing over the holiday and that you will sustain them next year as the vaccination programme is rolled out. We pray for the uncertainty and lack of confidence that businesses are feeling due to Brexit and the impact that this is having on the economy. We pray for your wisdom and insight for our leaders, including the government and the Prime Minister, in the difficult decisions that they have to make in the next few days and weeks. Help us to have our trust in you. We thank you that you reign and rule victoriously in the earth and that you are working out your promises in our lives despite the uncertain times in which we are living. Thank you, Father, that we do not work alone. Emmanuel, God with us. Father, we thank you that your word says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, and that includes COVID, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. At this Christmas time, we pray that you will make your presence known in a real and powerful way to each person watching this service. We thank you that you're not limited to a church building and you can meet us in our homes. Thank you for your promise that you are Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.
One of the main reasons that we're being given in order to help us embrace our limitations is that it protects and serves other people, especially those that we love. And that's exactly why Jesus did what he did. He limited himself so that he could protect and serve the people on earth that he loved overwhelmingly. That's you and that's me. Eventually, he limited himself so much that he allowed himself to be taken by Roman soldiers and nailed to a cross and die. But one day, only three days later, he burst free from every limitation and rose from the grave. He conquered the limiting factor even of death itself and offers every person who believes in him, who has a relationship with him, the possibility of new limitless life. Maybe you've never considered God wanting to be with you in your hopes and fears. Maybe you've never realized just how much he, Jesus, loves you. And if that is you tonight, we want to tell you that God wants to be with you. That's why Jesus came. That's what we've been saying all evening. And so maybe for you, tonight's the night to respond to that, to maybe cry out to God, just speaking normal words. You don't need to say anything fancy. Just cry out to him and ask him to be with you, to show himself to you. Maybe get in touch with with ourselves at at the Baptist church or a a church that you're familiar with or someone who you know who knows Jesus. Speak to them. Ask them about this person, Jesus, who so wants to be with you. He came to be among us. Emmanuel, God with us. We hope that you've enjoyed being with us this evening. Thank you so much for joining with us. And we're going to finish tonight by singing together that wonderful carol, O Come all ye faithful. Yeah.